again, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you from the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. And I am honored to have Mimi here with us with Mayor Panin. And Mimi, this is very exciting. I'm, is this your first trip to, to NRB? Yes. Oh my God. So I have to tell you just a little backstory. Please. I've been working for years since we came on. We joined NRB in 2007. I brought a rabbi to speak at our breakfast we were having. There had never been a rabbi here. How Nobody. Many years ago was this? this was 2007. Uh huh. So I brought this rabbi, Chabad rabbi, Rabbi Menz. He's a media guy, had a radio, talk radio. So he totally gets the whole, you know, media thing. He comes and I tell him, you have 10 minutes to speak because I had a whole cast of characters who are going to speak to <laughs> And I learned that day, never tell a rabbi, he only has 10 oh, minutes. Man. He said, he started and I had a gal with cue cards sitting in the front to let our speakers know, 10, nine, eight. And when it got down to 30 seconds, he says, would you put that card down? <laughs> this is the first time I had a chance to speak to an evangelical Christian group and you're telling me I only have 10 minutes? No. So, anyhow. So, from that period, I w went to the, the leadership of the NRB, NRB and encouraged them. I went to the Jewish community, the Orthodox Jewish community. I said, look, you got to get, you got to come to this event because this is where the people who care about Israel are located. And now look at this place. It's amazing, it and this is, is your first trip, so welcome to the Thank NRB. you. This is, it was, I live in Israel, and I have three little boys, and a husband, and my sister lives in Israel, and her husband is currently fighting in Gaza, and she's home with her two kids, and it was really hard to leave, um, emotional to leave, and I decided to myself, I need to go to the only place in the world that feels like they're supporting Israel right yes. now. So I wanted to stand with like you. you feel like being loved and supported here? Oh my goodness. I feel like a movie star. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the only place in the world that supports Israel is this conference. Yes, absolutely. And so the least I could do was come and share a little bit of our I'm stories. I'm so glad you did. Me too. So tell us about Mir Panim. We are a social service agency in Israel. We run a network of five, what we call restaurant style soup kitchens. Okay. And from Very October good. 7th, our mission has greatly expanded because we have taken it upon ourselves to serve those who are most affected by the atrocities of this war. Yeah. And oh. what we do is food. Um, and so what we've been doing since then is providing meals and home goods and serving as a collection point for people that are displaced from their homes. 200,000 people in Israel are displaced from these homes. And um, for troops that are fighting on the front lines and providing them with a home cooked warm meal, 360,000 troops are, are serving in reserves duty right now. So we felt like there are people that need us all the time and we're there for them. But in this moment in history, we wanted to look back, to be able to look back and say, this is what we did. Wow, wow. So tell us some of the personal stories of the impact of what your organization has had on individuals, on families. Sure. So I was really, um, I, I can tell you on October 7th, um, in the evening, once, the, once everything was clear, what had been going on, I got a call from our CEO and he said, Three of our five branch managers have children fighting that went up on that very day. One went to reserves himself, and one has her family that are currently locked up in their safe room in the Gaza periphery area. And they have each called me and each requested that we open tonight, October 7th, to start cooking meals and providing for people that are most affected by this war. And there's nothing more personal yeah, than yeah. that. And for us, this war, and for every person, every citizen of Israel, this war is personal. Yes. Yeah, you know, one thing that we don't, we don't understand the concept of constantly living under trauma. You know, this was, October 7th was horrific. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, Israel is constantly under attack. 
I mean, before this, how many times did we see missiles being lobbed randomly for, you know, days, weeks on end, and then boom, they stop shooting everybody, the missiles stop flying, and everybody thinks we just go back to normal. When the people have been traumatizing, the service that you're providing, the food for families, for individuals, especially at a time when people are traumatized, they need, people need nourishment. We know this because of even in our own personal lives when tragedy strikes, what's the first thing that people do? Our friends and family, they come, they bring us meals to our home and this is what you're doing. You're taking care of the larger Israeli Jewish family in Israel. There's a woman who came in that is displaced from her home in the north and she's expecting. Her husband is serving in reserve duty and she has a three-year-old little boy. Oh, and gosh. she came into our branch and she said, I, I, I don't even know how to get ready for this baby. Um, huh. she didn't, she's in a temporary housing um, that our government is providing for her, but just beyond overwhelmed. And our branch manager jumped to action as a mom <laughs> and leave it to a mom to take care yes. of business. And she um, activated a network of volunteers that got everything for this new baby clothes, diapers, or whatever she needed. And also, because she's a mom, she also got gifts yes. for the three-year-old so oh. that they can welcome and won't be jealous of the baby. And I think that this is the ethos of the Israeli people taking care of each other at this yes. moment. And I think that is what Mayor Panim is about, seeing each face. Mayor Panim in Hebrew is translated to brighten the face. Oh, and so we wow. really try to look into every person's face and, and learn their story so that we could help make them whole. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we all have experienced trauma in our lives. And think about when we're going through a personal traumatic event, to even think about, you know, preparing a meal or going shopping, um, just the very basics, it's, it's, a, it's hard, it's difficult. And when you have someone who's gonna come in and is gonna provide that need and help take care of you, help hold your hand through the process to comfort them, especially after what Israel has just endured, is so important. So Mimi, tell our audience, how can they support what you're doing? Where can they find more sure. information about your organization. Thank you. I would say that the best thing to do is go to our website, and that is M-E-I-R, Hanim, P-A-N-I-M, dot org. It's a big Hebrew name, um, but I promise if you take the time to go and visit our website, um, you will be inspired by stories like the ones I just shared with you yes. about how we're helping and how in this time of terrible trauma and crisis, we're seeing people both in Israel and support us from around the world, standing with us and helping us get through this difficult, traumatic time together. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to stand with our Jewish brethren. We want to stand with Mimi and Mir Panim. And if you feel led, if you feel like the Lord is speaking to you right now to support this incredible work, just a very, you know, just this, the, the basics of what individuals need to be comforted, to, to have someone who will help them through this time and provide that nourishment. So I want to encourage you to visit the website. Mimi, what an honor. Thank so you. good to meet you. I'm so glad you came. And Thank I'm going to look forward to seeing you when we come to Israel. Oh, that May. would be amazing. I was just talking about that. I have been so honored to be here. And I moved to Israel six years ago. And in my American life, I was quite insulated in the Jewish community. And since I've moved to Israel, I have developed such an amazing network of Christian supporters yes. and friends. I never thought after moving to Israel, I'd be ordering Christmas cards oh. on the Amazon. Oh my gosh. And it has been such an honor for me. Oh, well, I know it's been an honor to them yeah. and to me as well. So. We'll get to see you next yes, year. This needs be to be a regular staple. I love that. You I'm have to come it. back. I'm in. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank this you. is beautiful. Thank you.